We're essentially going to work like gemology students. Okay. And we're going to use four instruments that they will all have to learn. You have three very different looking gemstones mm -hmm. there, and we're going to figure out how to identify those using these instruments. All right. Okay. Hey guys, Charles is back with us today. He has brought us a box and also make sure that you stay to the end of the video for a really exciting giveaway. Can I go ahead and unbox it? Get stuck right in. There's plenty in there and it's going oh. to keep us busy for a while. Uh -huh. We have some gem instruments. We do indeed. We have yeah. a polariscope, loops, a dichroscope. Okay. And then we are going to look at a couple of gem spectrums. You have three very different looking gemstones mm -hmm. there, and we're going to figure out how to identify those using these instruments. All right. Okay. With all gemology, we start with general observations. Okay. So I think we should take each of these gemstones and we should just observe. Okay. Right? Our first impressions are likely to be color. Yes. Now, we have three gemstones here. One is very obviously red. Yes. Right. We've got no problem with that. So immediately in our heads we are going, that is not going to be anything I know to be green. Okay. And the greens are a little more interesting because well, we know they're not ruby yes. and we know they're not sapphire, but there are a lot of green gemstones. Mm -hmm. So with no further ado, we will pick up a gemstone and a loop and okay. start looking at it. One of the key points about gemology is learning to use a loop correctly. So it starts up at your eye and then you're bringing the gemstone into focus. Does it matter okay. which side you look through? No, it doesn't. Okay. No. All loops will work both ways around. Most loops nowadays are optically corrected. That means there, there are a couple of lenses in there okay. that are correcting distortion. Okay, so you're doing that perfectly. You're using your thumb as a spacer and you've brought the gemstone into focus. And it's resting against your fingers, so it's fairly steady. And if you move it ever so slightly forwards and backwards, you'll probably see the, the focal length mm -hmm of a loop is not great. It probably is only a millimeter or two. Yes. On, on a 10 times loop. We're making an observation on the luster. We're making observations on the facet edges. Are they chipped? Are they abraded? Do we see any fractures? I don't believe so. Okay. Are you seeing any secondary colors at all? Yes. So you are. And what are those secondary colors? Maybe a reddish, orange, brown. Reddish. Now, that is a major clue. Mm -hmm. So we put that in the back of our heads. At this point, we're also observing so mm -hmm. the quality of the cut. Everything looks like there's care taken into it. Okay. Do you see anything at all inside? Yes. That was the first thing that I noticed. Okay. So all what these have little you observed? black dots kind of in an arc in the middle. Stone number two. Okay. What do you see? I see a lot. It mm -hmm. seems maybe there's a chip up on this corner. Okay. And maybe a surface scratch. Okay. And in the gemstone, do you see anything? Yes. It's almost kind of looks like a jellyfish ah. to me. The way you can kind of see through a jellyfish, but it's a little bit cloudy. Okay. Would it be a disc? Yes, it is. It looks like a disc. Discoid. Yeah. Okay, that is what they would call a lily pad. That's essentially a stress fracture that has followed a plane within the stone. Also with this particular gemstone is that shade of green. Yes. The very best material gets described as apple. So that is helpful stuff. But we can hold off the diagnosis a little <laughs> longer. That is a crazy red, isn't it? It is. It's almost unbelievable type of red to just come out of the ground. It does not seem like all of the facets are necessarily lining up. So they've cut it cheaply. They've not put yeah. a lot of care into it. So for something that is such a wow in your face mm -hmm. red, they've not put a lot of effort into that. Yes. Okay, good point to note. I'm seeing maybe a surface scratch on the face of it. Okay, so there's a suggestion of the hardness of the material. Anything in, inside? Yes, it looks like bubbles. Not all bubbles are the same, shall yeah. we say. Some may just be cavities within a gemstone. 
But again, we'll hold off the diagnosis. Now we're going to move on to one of our instruments. This is something called the polariscope. Okay. Whenever we look at a gemstone, like we're looking at these, we're seeing a color that is the result of the light that's hitting it. A polariscope has a couple of components that we can look at right here, okay? This frosted glass at the base is polarized, okay. right? So it is going to have that very randomly scattered light that is coming through a gemstone mm -hmm. and it is going to direct it in a single direction. That is called the polarizer. The one on top is going to do exactly the same thing. Okay. But it's not called the polarizer. <laughs> it's called the analyzer. It is going to give us our analysis. And the reason it's going to do that is because it has been set at 90 degrees. If all light that comes through this way mm -hmm. is coming in rays that are like that, mm -hmm. and they hit this top one that is only allowed to let rays that come like that through, what are we going to get there? Nothing. Nothing. No light is going to come through because we're not letting it through. Mm -hmm. We've set the polarizers opposite. So that is a polariscope. We have larger ones. That is a wonderful little travel one. This is also small enough to travel. It has slight differences. There we can move a stage that is sitting on top of the polarizer. So this isn't the polarizer. This is just a stage. So okay. this makes it easier to do what we're going to need to do, which is turn our gem in a circle. Oh, okay. Right. And this, we have to make sure we set it to the darkest point. So this, oh, okay. where this is all preset in here, and we don't have a lot of flexibility, that one, if you turn it, mm -hmm. you will see, you'll be able to find its darkest points. We sell these here. So okay. these, these are fantastic little machines. Let us try looking at how these crystals have grown, because mm -hmm. that is essentially what a, a polariscope is going to tell us. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that's really important because we know that there are seven different crystal systems. We're going to turn that thing around in a circle and you're going to tell me what you see. Right now it seems so what are you seeing? dark. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of okay. light on the edges coming through, but I don't know yeah. if that's just the way that it's cut. Okay. I mean, it seems to stay pretty much the same yeah. throughout. Okay. And that's dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not really giving us anything at all. Okay, yeah. that is an important first point. So that is an isotropic gemstone. Okay. okay, what does it mean for a gem to be isotropic? An isotropic gemstone is either cubic crystal system, so okay. we're thinking things like diamond, spinel, garnet, or amorphous. There's nothing structured to it. So let us try these other two. Now this is the one that had lily pads in it. Now this and is not dark. I can immediately okay. see that. Okay, so light's coming through. All right, mm -hmm. so let's move that around. At 90 degrees, it's still light, but I see like it going out a little bit through the turn. Okay, in a 360 degree rotation, you're seeing light and dark and light and dark. Yes. Yeah, that is telling us Every time we've moved that through 90 degrees, we have presented our analyzer with light coming at it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So that's telling us the gemstone is redirecting the light. Mm -hmm. In two different ways. In, in different okay. ways, yeah. So that is a very important clue. That tells us that the gemstone is anisotropic. So that can belong to any crystal system other than cubic. If we'd done our initial observation and gone, hmm, green gemstone, slightly earthy looking green, uh, could that be a garnet? We're now going, no, that's not a garnet. Okay. We're now thinking of a couple of other ones that mm -hmm. it might be. So again, this one is light at this mm -hmm. position, and it's doing the same thing. So we've got two anisotropic gems. Mm -hmm. Two gemstones that we know belong to crystal systems other than cubic. We've had a quick look, we've established... That is isotropic. Yes, and these two are... Anisotropic. Anisotropic. Okay, we're going to look at these three again using mm -hmm. another pair of instruments. This is called a dichroscope. So, dichroscopes will tell us whether a gemstone has pleochroism. Okay. 
With that banding of light that we've already established in this mm -hmm. gemstone, we will often see variations in color. And those right. variations in color are very useful for diagnosis. We've already established this red gemstone mm -hmm. isn't doing a lot. Yes. So we wouldn't expect it to show us any variation of color using a dichroscope. These two have shown us that there's stuff going on there with light. So it may help us to see these two through a microscope. This is the one that GEMA likes to use because it makes explanations so much easier. <laughs> I do believe we have these for sale on the um, JTV website. You can mm. see a dividing line. Half of this is polarized one way and the other mm -hmm. half the other way. We're going to look at rotating it over mm -hmm. the top. If we s think we see a subtle variation we're going to move and just confirm. Or we may get nothing and then we tip the gemstone on its side. Not really seeing... Not a lot. I mean, okay. one side does look slightly darker or maybe almost a little bit yellower, yeah. if that makes sense. Uh -huh. Your first impression of color will sometimes, you, you'll think you see a secondary color. So if you spotted any secondary color in that, you'd be seeing more of it now. Mm -hmm. What we're banking on this gemstone is it had that slightly earthy green color to it. Mm -hmm. It had lily pads. We have seen it is anisotropic and we're seeing weak pleochrism there. Yes, it's very subtle. Let's try another one. This is very strong. And what colors are you seeing? So right now on the top, I'm getting very rich orangish brown. Okay. And on the bottom, I'm getting green. So we describe that as strongly pleochroic, mm -hmm. am I right? Yeah, when I yeah. move the angle, I'm not really getting it very okay. much. And then here I am, here I am. Okay, take a look at it on its side. The same or less or more? The green that I'm seeing is a little bit more prominent of a color. So if you can view down there what colors you see if you split it that way. There's really more of an orange instead of a brown. This time it's not along this line. The side that it sits doesn't mm -hmm. matter. So gemstones may have three different colors. Yeah, I'm getting the orangish and then more of the brown and then also the green. This is trichroic. Only a couple of gemstones do that. Yes. Right. One of those is tanzanite. I don't think this one's tanzanite, so okay. I'm going to say it's andalusite. That's correct. Andalusite is an awesome gemstone for that. One down. Okay. Two to go. All right. All right. So we're moving on to our next instrument, which is the spectroscope. Spectroscopes come in two different forms. The first is this, which is a diffraction grating. It spreads the visible light into quite an even rainbow spectrum. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for markers in that. And we can use that to diagnose gemstones because we know gemstones often get their color from elements. Right. right. And those influence the light. Mm -hmm. So if we can split it up into a spectrum, take a look at it and see where little shadows and interference lines appear, we go, ah, it's an emerald. Or ah, there's a line at 416, it's probably a sapphire. We're putting this in here just to keep it steady. And we're gonna put a gemstone on there and we can rotate this. This was our lily pad. Yes. Right. I'm shining down onto the stone. So you're mm -hmm. looking at a very highly illuminated gemstone. And the spectrum on this particular one will probably be pretty subtle if you see it at all. In the blue, I'm seeing some subtle gaps. There's not like strong line so they're, gaps. They're shadows. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the blue part of the spectrum, that gemstone is blocking or absorbing and not letting through certain frequencies of blue, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Those certain frequencies are telling us what has created the color in that gemstone, mm -hmm. okay? So you'll maybe see about three. Yes. And there'll be shadows, kind of fairly even in width. Mm -hmm. And that's an iron spectrum. Okay. okay. So we know it's colored by iron? So we know it's colored okay. by iron. So there is one gemstone out there that has lily pads that is anisotropic that has weak pleochrism and that has an iron spectrum. I immediately, when I first saw it, I thought it was peridot. It and is. And I think 
everything that I've seen so far has made me think but Bardo. That is what it is all about. You can have a first impression, but you must then confirm yes. it. This next one actually is unusual, but it's even easier and it's fun because its <laughs> spectrum is so particular to it. With many red gemstones, you will still get other colors. So something like ruby, colored by chromium, will give us a good chromium spectrum. So with this guy, I'm expecting you to see quite a radical spectrum. It is just the edge of the orange and red. That's it. That's all yeah. I'm it's seeing. It's blocked absolutely everything out. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a very particular kind of glass that does that. Okay. Okay. And it is colored with an element called selenium. Okay. And selenium glass gives us that fabulous red. I mean, how cool yes. is that red? As you said earlier, it is unreal. Very often, old costume jewelry will have selenium glass. And it, yeah. as gemologists, it still gives us a bit of a kick because yeah. it's a quirky, kind of unique thing. We set out not to make this a boring instructional video. We both went on a bit of a journey. So on a typical unboxing, this would be when we take a closer look at something, yeah. but we've been taking a close look at everything today. We have So indeed. I think we should go straight to the giveaway. Exciting. All right, what have we got? Today, as a giveaway, we have this really cool geode. Mm -hmm. We actually opened this when we were practicing for uh, one of our live streams, and it was a shame that we didn't get this on camera because it's so cool. So we have amethyst wow. in here. That's awesome, and something else. I can yes, see. there Let's is something some else. On that. We'll look at that. Oh my, oh wow. So we've got these little like pink bits which is reading as manganese. Yes. And then down here, and that's okay. gertite covered by calcite. And also look at the really subtle striping here. Whoever gets this is super lucky. They're going to be very pleased. Yes. If you would like a chance to win this geode, email your name, address, and phone number to info at gemstones.com. Include the word geode in the subject line. We will take entries for one week after this video is posted, and then we'll choose a winner at random. We love our international viewers, but this is unfortunately only open to U.S. residents. For the full terms and conditions, go to jtv.com slash giveaway rules. And if you want to get started with gemology and you don't have some of these tools for yourself, check the links down in the description below. You can actually buy some of these and they're going to be more affordable than you might think. Yes, we have a good selection on the website and we also have a good selection of books. Thank you so much for coming today, Charles. And thank you for having me. All right, let us know down in the comments if you would like to see any more videos like this. And while you're there, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss our future videos. Bye. Goodbye.